This is Sarah. She is 58 years old and has been experiencing a shortness of breath, feelings of chest pain, lightheadedness, and swelling in her feet. Because she is having trouble breathing, she decides to go to the emergency department. The cardiologist at the hospital, Dr. House, orders a series of tests to be done on Sarah in order to determine the problem. First, they conduct an electrocardiogram on Sarah. An electrocardiogram measures the electrical activity in the heart and any irregularities in the heartbeat. The results showed right ventricular hypertrophy identified by the tall R waves in leads V1, V2, and V3. Since the results are not very specific, Dr. House decides an echocardiogram needs to be performed next. An echocardiogram uses ultrasound technology to produce a visual of the blood flow between the heart chambers and valves. The results of Sarah's echocardiogram show right ventricular dilation and hypertrophy. Dr. House suspects it to be pulmonary arterial hypertension, so he orders a pulmonary catheterization through the internal jugular vein to confirm his diagnosis. In this test, a catheter is inserted in through either the neck, arm, or groin area. The catheter enters the pulmonary arteries and the heart, and the pressure in those areas is recorded. The results showed a pressure of 38 millimeters of mercury in the pulmonary arteries, which is higher than normal, and it confirms a diagnosis of pulmonary arterial hypertension. To understand what is causing this, we must first look at how blood circulation occurs in the body. The heart is a muscle which pumps blood throughout the body through tubes called arteries and veins. Arteries take away blood from the heart, whereas veins bring blood back to the heart. The left side of the heart receives oxygenated blood from the lungs through the pulmonary veins. The blood first enters into the left atrium and then moves to the left ventricle and goes out by the systemic arteries to the rest of the body. The right heart then collects deoxygenated blood from the systemic veins and it goes through the right atrium, right ventricle, and returns to the lungs through the pulmonary arteries. Pulmonary arterial hypertension occurs when there is high pressure in the pulmonary arteries. Pressure equals the blood flow times the resistance, so the increase in pressure needs to be compensated by an increase in blood flow. This leads to the right ventricle having to pump harder in order to ensure continuous blood flow. Eventually, the right ventricle dilates because of the high pressure on the ventricle walls. The high pressure occurs due to damage or blockage in the pulmonary arteries. Diseases such as HIV, liver disease, or connective tissue disease may lead to scarring in the tissue in blood vessels. This causes a narrowing of the blood vessels leading to an increase in resistance and pressure. Some other risk factors include chemotherapy, living at high altitudes for long periods, smoking, and using recreational drugs. Because of the severity of this condition, it's really important that it is not left untreated as it causes permanent damage to the heart and even can cause other serious disorders such as heart failure and arrhythmias. In order to treat pulmonary arterial hypertension, it is essential to resume proper blood flow throughout the body. This can be done by a variety of methods like medications, oxygen therapy, and surgery. The main goal of medications is to dilate the blood vessels so that the heart can pump blood more easily. Some examples of these medications are blood thinners like warfarin which prevent blood clots, ones that stop the narrowing of blood vessels like endothelial receptor antagonists like embrisentan, or medications which relax blood vessels like calcium channel blockers such as nifidipine and dotiozam. Later stages may require a different type of intervention like a procedure known as balloon pulmonary angioplasty. In this procedure, a catheter with guide wire is inserted into the artery through the neck or groin. It is guided by echocardiography to the site of the blockage where a balloon is inflated and presses the blood clots to the walls of the arteries. This helps lower the blood pressure in the pulmonary artery and overall improve heart function. Besides implementing medication, lifestyle interventions like quitting smoking and starting light exercises has been shown to relieve symptoms caused by this disease. Since Sarah came in early, Dr. House was able to prescribe her with medication and told her to start doing light exercises to help relieve her symptoms. He also advised her to switch to a low-salt diet in order to help lower her blood pressure. Since Sarah made all of these changes in her life, her symptoms have decreased significantly and she is back to enjoying her life.